because it is possible to heal, to change your body. And it begins with the mind and our emotions. I truly believe that it's not the complete story, but it's a big part of the story. So more on that later. So I've been talking about acupuncture the past few lives um, for different reasons. And we have discussed the history of acupuncture, the origin, where it started, why it started, the different cultures it's been to, how it's adapted to the cultures that it's been in. The style that we practice here in New York is called American style. At least that's what I do, which means I adapt to your um, comfort level, your needs, the amount of time you have. If you just had lunch, if you didn't have lunch, there's all of these things that we have to take into consideration regarding how strong the treatment is, how long the treatment is. There really isn't one set answer, right? We have to adapt to the person. We adapt to you. This is We're here for you to help you improve. So we've talked about the branches of acupuncture. We do cupping, we do moxibustion, we do herbal therapy, um, which is Chinese medicinals as opposed to like functional herbal therapy, a little bit different. We do diet, um, which is historically one of the branches of Chinese medicine and Twena, which is the hands-on, like it's kind of like massage. It's a combination of massage and chiropractic, uh, which is a wonderful way to get things moving in the body. And then of course we do acupuncture. So those are the, the classical branches of Chinese medicine. Today, I really want to talk a little bit about acupuncture theory, the, well, congratulations. That's so exciting. And we've had a lot of good news this week, really good news. A lot of people have come in and said that they have had a successful transfer and um, it's a really wonderful way to begin the year. Um, I do have some good news for those of you that have not had success, though. I've completed a document that I want to share with everybody about recurring pregnancy loss. Simple things you can do every day. Those of you that know me know that I say what you do every day matters most. I truly believe that. I have experienced that. That is the truth. So I created a document for recurring pregnancy loss of things you can do every day that are going to help you. Great testimonials, some good resources in there. So if you go to my website, sign up for my newsletter, and I'm going to email it out to everybody, jenniferwaters.net. In a minute, I'll put that in the, the chat or whatever it's called today. Okay, so back to acupuncture theory, okay? So the theory is based on the fact that we are biochemical beings. We are also bioelectrical beings. You know that, right? Um so the acupuncture is based on what we call channel theory. There's channels in your body. This is the throughway system in your body. This is the meridians is one way. There, we call them meridians. We call them channels. I call them the highway system. There's different ways to call them. If you Google it, maps of the body are going to come up with these channel systems on there. It's fascinating to look at. The theory is that the channels govern the function of the organs. So a lot of people come in and I'll say, your gallbladder is showing to be excess. And they say, well, I don't have a gallbladder. I had that organ removed. Well, the channel itself, the meridian is still functioning. So we can have problems in the channel with or without the organ. We can use the channel to affect how the organ is functioning. And sometimes the channel gets affected by scar tissue, surgery, things will block the energetic flow on the channel that we need to unblock so that the energetic highway on that channel is open and free and moving. Okay. So along these channels or meridians, there are acupuncture points, right? So one way to look at it is that there's no place on the body that is not a point. And yet there are specific points along the channels in the body that are portals. These are energetic portals that go more deeply into the channel, into the fascial layer, and conduct, help to conduct the energy um, in the channel, if that makes sense. I hope I'm explaining this good. So 
there's different ways to stimulate or motivate the energy in the channel through this point. You can use a needle, which I also call a filiform because we have a lot of people that are needle averse and I understand it's a natural instinct. You true needle warriors that are doing the PIO shots. I mean, it's awesome. It doesn't make it easier, right? You don't think, yay, I'm doing shots. So now I want to get needles. No, not necessarily. So you can also use Light is my favorite way to stimulate channels and acupuncture points in the body is using light in the form of a patch. You'll see I have patches on. I use patches every day. I love it. You can use a laser. You can use a laser pen. You can use um, an LED light. You can use your thumb. All right. You can use a magnet. There's no nothing really that's out of the ballpark that you cannot use over the points to help what? facilitate the energy, the bioelectrical part of your body, right? So we don't necessarily as a culture believe in the bioenergetics because it's the least tangible part of ourselves. And yet on some level, we know it's true. It's sort of like static cling. Well, we don't really think about it because we don't have it in our world all the time. But boy, once you get zapped, by the sock that just came out of the dryer or whatever, you know, like, wow, I do have electricity in my body, right? So we know that it's real. It's what um, is keeping us alive. And you have probably heard me say this before. The zinc spark is really where it begins. When an embryo is created with the sperm and the egg, it's the first time that we see light. There's visible light that's created through the zinc spark. Now, personally, I feel it's because of zinc that there's a spark, right? Because we need the minerals, the trace minerals and the macro minerals in our body to have life, right? So then the next spark of light, which is life, is when the embryo is transferred into your uterus, right? And you see that spark of light. That's the second spark of light. And that is how it all begins, right? Is with light, which is our vitality, so um, one of the main theories of Chinese medicine is called five element theory. And what they have discovered, and this goes back thousands of years, there's a reason why Chinese medicine has been around forever, is because it's just like yoga. Things that are tried and true remain in our culture. Our culture uses them. It may adapt them to our needs of today, but it remains consistent, right? things change a little bit, but we are consistently relying on these theories to help us, okay? Not that much changes outside of the tech world, right? Our needs are the same. Our feelings are the same. Our desires are the same. We're really not that different now than we were hundreds of years ago in terms of that. We want health. We want vitality. We want energy. We want to sleep well. We want to eliminate well, all of the basics. So five element theory is based on the theory, the fact that every season is connected to an organ. So right now we're beginning winter, which is kidney bladder. And you'll find a lot of people with underlying kidney issues, things will come out in the winter, whether it's kidney stones or things that are connected to the kidneys. Now, remember how the kidneys are defined in Chinese medicine are much larger than Western medicine. We're not just talking about filtration um, and the basics of how kid, uh, the kidneys function. We're talking about the psycho-emotional aspect of the organ meridian theory. So it's a much more expansive way to understand the body and its functions. Right. So it's fascinating. Every organ is either yin or yang. And so the kidneys are yin. So there's a yang pair, which is the urinary bladder. So they are connected energetically. They are connected in the body. These meridian systems is actually one long meridian. So you could have an imbalance in your kidney and it will affect the bladder channel. These are channels. And sometimes it does manifest in the organ itself. It just depends. So we can use this five element theory to understand what the season is asking from us. How are we being recruited, influenced um, in order to maintain balance? Most of the people that I see come to me because they're out of balance. They're feeling out of sorts. They're feeling 
things aren't right. They're having an excess or deficiency of something. So we can look to this season. What does winter ask of us? They, it wants us to be stiller, right? Do less. Go to sleep earlier. Take advantage of the dark time. Read more. Sit in front of the fire. Do things that are allowing you to rest and regenerate yourself. You think about nature, going into hibernation. It is a bit of a hibernation season, right? It is the time to get still, to meditate, to be with yourself in your interior world, to examine yourself more deeply, to see what's going on, what is in balance. Remember, the correction begins in the mind. So we have to create space for us to go inside of our mind to really examine what's going on. This is a time to do um, more tonic herbs, Korean ginseng, American ginseng, uh, things that help support the kidneys. The other theory in five element theory is that if you want to have a good spring, look to the winter. So believe it or not, right now we are preparing our bodies for the spring, right? So the healthier you are now, the healthier you will be in the spring. A lot of people say, oh, spring comes and all my allergies are showing up. I feel horrible in the spring. Well, we go back in time. We look, what is the winter like for you? Were you doing a lot of inflammatory things, diet, lifestyle, all of that? So there's a lot to learn in Chinese medicine theory. It goes on and on. The books is fascinating. It's part of why I got involved with this tradition is because I knew I would never be bored. And that is for sure. There's a lot to learn. So next week, we're going to talk about how to maximize your acupuncture session. What can you do during that time? And then points, acupuncture points that you can do every day to help yourself, whether it's with tapping or phototherapy or pressure or laser or whatever to work on the bioenergetics of your body. Okay. I always say when in doubt, tap it out. All right, folks, have a wonderful day. Let me see if I can answer any questions. Oh, before I forget, I'm going to put in here... If you want to email me specific questions, go ahead and do that through, oh gosh, I wish I was better at this, putting my, um, do, 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 all right, I'm accepting folks. This is way above my pay grade, everyone. All right, I don't know how to put, okay, anyways, it's jenniferwaters.com net. Okay. For those of you that are there, if you have questions, just go ahead and um, reach out to me. Okay. Everybody have a wonderful day. Sorry. I, I'm pretty good at multitasking, but obviously I think that I am better than I am.